Hello, in this video I wanted to go over some of my setup with PFSense to get load balancing to work. Now basically load balancing for those of you who don't know, it uh, gives you the ability to have multiple internet connections. Now they may be ADSL or VDSL or fiber or uh, coax or 4G. It doesn't really matter. You can have multiple different types if you wanted uh, of internet connections. And then you essentially combine them all together and have effectively the speed of all of them combined. And in some cases, the upload of all of them combined. So uh, what I mean by that is, um, for instance, if I uh, am sending a file, like if I am uploading a YouTube video, that will tend to only use one of my two internet connections. So the speed I'm getting on that video for the upload is essentially uh, the maximum speed of just one of my connections. However, I could do two videos at once and that would use both connections. So although one wouldn't be faster, doing two would be as fast as if I weren't doing the other one, if that makes any sense. I've also noticed that, uh, for instance, when I save a file to my uh, Mac's desktop, uh, Apple starts pushing that up to the cloud and that does use both connections. As for downloads, if I'm downloading something like a Steam game or a Windows update, uh, that'll automatically be using both connections. And the way it does this is essentially my router requests packet A from connection 1 and packet B from connection 2. And uh, essentially then it just halves the load. So um, what you'll see here is I've got uh, two gateways and both of these connections are 100 slash 40 NBN connections. They're both fiber to the node. Um, so that technology is VDSL. So I've named them VDSL1 and VDSL2. Now, the actual speed I get is not 100 meg. Um, I am 500 meters from my node. So the speed I actually get based on the uh, line, so the quality of the phone line, is somewhere around the 70 to 75 megabit mark. So most of the time, my internet connection with both combined is hovering around the 140, 145 mark, um, which I find as uh, decent. I think of that as a good enough speed. I do not think 70 meg is a good enough speed. That's why I have two connections. Now, with this setup, you can do more than two connections if you wanted. Uh, you could add a 4G connection or uh, maybe a... Um, DSL connection and a maybe two DSL connections, a 4G connection and a, a coax connection. It all depends what's available in your area. Now, um, to get into this, basically, I'm going to go over. Uh, first of all, I'll show you uh, the setup I actually have and how things are plugged in. This is my uh, network rack that's sitting in the kitchen. Um, so, what I've got here is I've got my um, ISP provided modem there. Uh, I've got my other ISP provided modem there. I have my HP uh, computer there that's running PFSense. And I specifically chose this machine because out of all the machines I had tested, this had the lowest power consumption. And I could put a, a, a NIC in there quite easily that gave me another two uh, network ports. So I have one network port that this modem is plugged into, one network port that that's plugged into, and that is the, uh, the two WAN ports. And then I have one more network port that connects to the network switch. So then I've got the network switch that then connects to all of my wireless access points. It connects to uh, my servers and uh, it connects to the um, the other switch that go th in the other building. Um, so then up here, you see these are the two phone jacks. So these are the only phone jacks in the house. So I've got the copper line that comes out of the street and it goes directly to the patch panel. So one is one phone jack, one is the other. And uh, I did get away with not having to pay for a second connections install fee because one, I did this myself. And two, I, I was very specific with the ISP when I signed up that, well, we signed up to one first and then a few months later we got the second connection. But I was very specific when I signed up for the second connection that we had two phone lines in the house already. In the 90s, we had a fax machine. It had a different phone number. So I was very specific that, no, we have two lines. Do not charge me for a second connection. And they said that they, would, uh, not, they weren't too sure if they could do that, and they would let me know if I was going to be charged, and I could cancel before it got installed. No one got in contact with, with me. It just got installed, and it was all good. However, about five, six months later, the, um, the person who... Uh, pays for the first internet connection, 
got a bill in their name for a new connection charge. But that was quite easy to get out of because we only had to ring the company and say, hey, we signed up when the NBN came in and we've had a phone here for the last 30 years. So clearly not a new house. That's a mistake. So we didn't have to pay that. And you, realistically, if you have two lines in the house already, you shouldn't have to pay. There is no new setup. It's it's already there. The lines are there. So um, there's my two uh, modems. They're both bridged. You may have been able to guess that. Um, now bridging turns off uh, all of the uh, like the config page and everything in the modem. So when I've bridged my modems, what I've actually done is uh, first thing is I went in and disabled everything. So the VoIP, the Wi-Fi, turned all that off. And then uh, what I did was I, the very last step was to put it in bridged mode. Because once you put it in bridged mode, you can't access the web interface to configure anything or to do whatever. Um, and what bridged mode does is it basically turns the modem into a media converter. So this modem is pretty much only here to convert the phone line to an Ethernet port. So I've got the phone line that goes into uh, line one and goes into modem one into its DSL port, and then one of the yellow Ethernet ports on the back um, plugs into the PFSense router, and the IP address it gives the, the PFSense router is the IP address the ISP uh, the ISP's DHCP server is handing out. So there's no double natting or anything. If I want to um, open a port, I open it in here. These don't do anything. So they're just dumb. Um, as a side note, what I did work out was, because uh, I want everything to be as power efficient as possible, so one, I'm not wasting power, and two, the UPS lasts as long as possible if it power does go out. Um, so what I did was, these are 12 volt modems, I cut the power brick off and um, put a, a custom connector on the back of this PC and wired these into the 12 volt rail of the power supply. So uh, if I do need to reboot everything too, I can just shut this down and when it turns off, these go off. And I just push the power button, everything comes back up. Now, a really good thing to have if you're doing this setup is a spare ISP supplied modem. And the reason I say this is because every time I've had an issue, first of all, I have to double check that um, the issue is not with me, and it has been a few times. Uh, so I will restart um, the router and, and uh, my one of my last after a reboot if that doesn't fix it I'll normally plug uh, the cable straight from one of the modems into my laptop and see if I can get on the internet there. Um, if I ever have to contact my ISP they're pretty much the first thing in their script um, on a technical level after what color is the light and is it plugged in. Um, it, it is to go to the web interface. Now, I can't. there is no web interface in these once they're in bridged mode. So the first few times I rang them with an issue, um, before they could actually do anything, even if like I knew the problem was outside the house, um, I had to reset a modem, go to the config page and say, yes, there is no sync, or whatever. And um, then I'd have to reconfig the modem. So I, I was lucky enough to know someone who had a spare modem, um, that they got from the same ISP, so I keep this as a spare for when I need to do troubleshooting, and I I will just literally plug it into the phone jack, plug it into power, plug my laptop in. It's separate from my network completely. If there's no internet there, then I know it's not my problem. I can ring the ISP straight away. If there's internet there, then I have to dig in, find what that issue is. So that's that. So uh, I'm going to give you a, a bit of a speed test first to show you the kind of thing that will happen if you've got the two internet connections. So as I'm doing my speed test, uh, basically the router is going to request half of the uh, packets that it's trying to download from uh, the Optus Burwood server there. Uh, it's going to request half of those packets from one connection and half from the other connection. So what you're seeing here is the um, the data coming in from VDSL1 and coming in from VDSL2 and coming out of the LAN port into my switch. So um, I have effectively doubled my internet connection because I really only get a sync speed of around 70 meg. So as you can see, I'm getting around 140. Um, same thing for uploads, but I think uploads are a little less important. Um, the main thing I'm going to upload is going to be, say, a YouTube video. And for some reason, it, that only seems to want to use one of the connections. So I'm limited to only one connections upload. 
However, if I were doing two YouTube videos at once being uploaded, it would probably use both connections. The only other thing that really doesn't like to use both connections at once is going to be if I'm using a VPN, say, because the tunnel can really only go through one connection. It can't really go through two. Um, so I could have two separate VPN connections, though, maxing out the lines. Okay, so now I want to get into the... Um, should I just double check? Yeah, all right, great. I've got my notes here. So I want to get into how I set this up in the first place. So uh, one of the first steps uh, was to get both my interfaces there. So if I go into here, um, you'll see the interfaces are all there. If you're, if you're doing a, like a 4G USB modem thing, you need to get it here first. This was the hardest part for me when I was doing the 4G ones, um, and that's going to require some config. But once you're at this point and you've got all your interfaces, um, what I did was I went into each one, I've labeled it, I've selected DHCP because the ISP hands out my IP addresses. Um, I don't need PPPoE or any of that stuff. Now, I think there's a chance a few ISPs may, but mine did not. Um, I've got these two boxes ticked. I don't remember why, but they're ticked. So that's how my config looks. Named, tick, tick, tick. Okay, same on the other one. So that's VDSL2 is the same, different name obviously. And then LAN, that's the IP address of the LAN port. That's basically it. So um, if I go into system and then routing, yeah, no. and then gateway groups. All right, so these are the two individual gateways. So the gateway itself, so just under gateways here, the gateway itself is um, connected to an interface. So I've tried to keep all of my stuff named logically so I can understand it if I'm trying to troubleshoot, but basically I've selected interface, or the system might have done it automatically, I don't remember, but basically we've selected interface to be, so in this case VDSL1, I've named it VDSL1 gateway. Um, so you can just see what I've ticked here. Description and advanced. And I don't think there's anything special in here. The, the weight is one. If that's different, make them both one. This will, um, this from memory has something to do with um, if there's priority for a certain gateway to work, um, like to take double the amount of, of the load, but you want it to be even. Same thing for the gateway number two. It's just named like that. Uh, there is a monitor IP. They can't be the same, apparently, from memory. Um, it's basically something that the, uh, the PFSense will ping from that gateway to make sure it can ping it. So that's uh, Google's DNS server, and the other one was Google's other DNS server. So system, routing. What we want to do is go into gateway groups and I can't remember if there was already one here and I edited it or if I had to add a new one. But basically, you want to name it something that you can work work out what it is. So multi-WAM was my best option there. I've selected both of the gateways. I've given them both the same tier, which I believe has something to do with how much data. Like, I think that's because from memory, if, if I had two connections that were a different speed, I would want like the higher speed one to take double the amount of packets. Um, but both my interfaces are at the same speed, so I want them both on the same tier. Anyway, you can see what the config is there. Um, that's just a description, and I'm choosing the uh, high latency or packet loss as the trigger. So what will happen is if a um, connection goes down, so if, if, it, if they can't, your PFSense can't ping that uh, Google DNS server uh, or whatever, then it will just use the other connection. So that's how I'm getting fault tolerance. Um, that like I don't have, I don't notice it. It just works. Um, now to actually get the load balancing set up, now we've got uh, basically we have a point that is both connections. So the the group of multi WAN, if any packet hits that multi WAN group, then it's instantly going to go out of the two connections. Well, half down one, half down the other. 
So now we need to get a way of getting the data to go to the multi-wan group. So that's done in the firewall. So if we go to firewall and then rules, and then the, um, where was it? Uh, notes, let's see, gateway. Okay, so we're gonna choose the, the LAN, so the network interface. And then I'm going to go to the default allow rule. So basically, this is the firewall rule that is um, the, de the default rule that all your traffic is going to follow. So I want traffic that hits the firewall, because remember the firewall is in between the, the local area network and the WAN. I want when traffic hits it from the LAN, so I'm requesting to download something from inside the house, that it will then send it out through the multi-port, uh, the multi-WAN. So that's down here. So I have selected, yeah, okay, it's only down here I believe was the only thing I had to change. So I've selected the load balance group instead of one of the VDSL connections. So that way it's the gateway is choosing to go to the group that then sends it down both instead of just going to one. All right, so multi there. Um, then save. Now, what else? Then there's firewall, PF blocker ng, GOIP, advanced and gateway. So down here, and so under the, I'm pretty sure PF blocker ng is an add-on, so you might not even have this. But if you do have it, PF blocker ng, then GOIP, down to the bottom, open this up and make the custom gateway the multi-WAN. Um, that's just because this is another firewall and you want to protect that connection and not just one of the connections. Um, there was another step that the instructions I followed told me to do, but I later turned it off. But I'll show you what that is anyway. So under uh, System Advanced and Miscellaneous, so System Advanced Miscellaneous, uh, so there is a tick box here to use sticky connections. And basically this is, um, if your computer is talking to uh, a server, say it's downloading a file, um, using sticky connections will force that one connection there to the server to be stuck to only one interface. So you only get half of your total download speed because you're only using one connection. Um, if someone else on the network were to jump on and request a file, the system would send that possibly down the other network uh, connection because it's not uh, busy. So sticky connections will kind of limit your machine or, or that specific connection that's happening between uh, your, web, say, web browser and the server. It will limit that to stay in one, um, one link. Now this can be useful if you visit sites that there are a few minute amount of sites that will not work. Uh, properly, like you may not be able to log in because some of the packets will come from a different IP address and the site will just kind of throw a fit and say, no, you'll get kind of stuck in a login loop. I've got like one or two sites I visit that do that. Uh, it's not very common. And I don't go in here and turn this on to fix it. I just connect to a VPN and everything's fine. So keep that in mind. If you're doing this to share the internet connection with a lot of users, You'll probably want to tick this because you're not trying to go for raw speed. You're just trying to have internet available for a lot of people. <coughs> um, I'm going for raw speed, so I've unticked this. This allows basically anything that I've tested with the exception of a VPN and maybe one or two small things. Um, it allows them to just work at the full speed. Well, that's it for this video. Hopefully it's been informative or at the very least entertaining to most of you. If this video was helpful, please leave a comment down below. And if you liked the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I thank you very much for watching. Hopefully, I'll see you next time.